Justice Mims, it's wonderful to have you back at your alma mater as our 2015 convocation speaker. We, we are yours. President Reevely, I am humbled by your praise, and uh, I am humbled also when I think that the last time I wore a William and Mary academic gown and shook hands with the president, I was receiving my undergraduate degree, and I was told, say nothing, go quickly across the stage, and go back to your seat. This time, President Reevely has told me, speak for exactly 10 minutes, and then go back to your seat, <laughs> which I will do. But this isn't about me, it's about you. And so first of all, the most important part of my remarks is to say congratulations to each of you. You have earned the right to be sitting where you are, and we rejoice at your presence here. Now, as often occurs with older folks, such as myself, and I did hear the remark about the um, railings at the stadium. I'm very thankful to know that when I come back to cheer for the tribe. But as often happens, my thoughts have drifted back to a day that was much like today, 40 years ago. I was so excited to be here that I had come to campus a day early. I had been accepted off the waiting list, so I also thought that it would be important to move in as quickly as I could before admissions realized there was a mistake. <laughs> I was excited and nervous and intimidated, and I'm guessing many of you have had those emotions for the past few days. But in just those first 24 hours, I learned three things proving the immediate value of a William and Mary education. First, I learned that my lime green polyester disco shirt would not be worn again, ever. <laughs> Second, I learned the meaning of grace when I accidentally called a young dean by her first name. And not only that, I called her by her nickname, not realizing she was a dean. Do not call any of the deans Susie during your first week here, please. Finally, I learned, or had it confirmed, that I was not the smartest person here. Which brings me to the title of this talk, The Three Bs. The Three Bs. Now, I just saw two or three people break into a cold sweat and start to shake when I mentioned Bs. We're not talking about A's or B's or C's, the letter grade. Rather, the three B's are the imperative form of the verb to be. But let me digress, knowing that some of you have never received a B, and others have only rarely done so. You might be interested to know that last year, only six William & Mary graduates earned all A's. If that statistic holds for this freshman class, each of you has a 99.6% chance of not having a 4.0 average when you graduate. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Isn't that freeing? Can't you just take a deep breath and say, that is great. You could turn to the person beside you and say, welcome to William and Mary. I am 99.6% sure you're not going to make all A's here. <laughs> it's not all about the grades. So here are your three B's. Be realistic, be merciful, and be curious. First, be realistic. You are not perfect. Your roommate is not perfect. You've already figured that second part out. No one on this campus is perfect. Thank goodness you don't have to be. You will have highs and lows, academically, socially, and emotionally. That's part of life, and it's OK. As a student, there were times when anxiety and exhaustion and depression swept over me. 
But that was an era when few were upfront about their mental health needs. I certainly wasn't. Thankfully, this is a new era. If one tribe, one family, has a deeper meaning, and I believe that it can have, it means that as you are realistic about your needs, as you are realistic and upfront, there are those within this community who will come beside you. No one does life alone. That brings me to the second B, which is related. Be merciful. Because you are not perfect and you are surrounded by imperfect people, you will have many opportunities to seek and receive mercy. Mercy is the virtue that exposes our humility and our humanity. It is often present when we are transparent about our needs. Here's a couple of everyday examples of how seeking and receiving mercy can work wonders. I need help. How can I help you? I messed up. It's OK. I mess up too. We all do. Let's talk. These are simple words that seek and extend mercy. But sometimes words aren't even needed. Henry Nouwen, the author and theologian, wrote of the healing power of presence. Sometimes simply being there is what is needed. As I learned when I was a student here, the first semester of my sophomore year was awful. My father had suffered a heart attack. A girlfriend had broken my heart, or so I thought at the time. I had barely passed my courses, and over the winter break, I was here alone, totally miserable, since I was waiting tables at a colonial tavern. So what did my roommate do? <clears throat> he came back to school early just to hang out with me. He didn't need to speak any words of wisdom. His mere presence was an act of mercy that I've recalled for the rest of my life. Now, I love the term that I read a few years ago, 2 a.m. friend. I hope you will remember that term, 2 a.m. friend. There will be times of crisis when you need a friend at 2 o'clock in the morning. We all do. As you follow the path of mercy, you can be that friend to someone else. And now, the final B. Be curious. When I was a student, there was a tradition that the graduating class asked a favorite professor to deliver our last lecture. My class chose a young economics professor who praised the American economy. In his words, where else in the world can so many parents send their kids to four years of summer camp as a high school graduation present? <laughs> as is often the case with gentle satire, there was a kernel of truth in his tongue-in-cheek question. For those of you who went to summer camp, it was fun. Yet it also expanded your horizons. It's where you learned outside of the classroom. Embrace these aspects of William and Mary. William and Mary is not summer camp. It is hard. Sometimes it is very hard. But it also should be fun as you expand your horizons and as you learn outside of the classroom. The poet Mary Oliver asked, what is it you plan to do with your wild and precious life? Follow your curiosity, and you can begin to find the answer here. So my advice is simple. Be realistic, be merciful, be curious. But now I need to digress again. <clears throat> I've been speaking as an alumnus as a member of the William and Mary community, that lifetime community that President Reevely talked about. 
But I'm also a parent. I've sent three wonderful daughters off to various colleges. So I asked the mother of one of the young men sitting here today, one of the members of the freshman class, what she would say to him at this moment, and by implication what each of your parents would say to each of you. Now, to the young man whose heart is now beating very rapidly, as an act of mercy, I will not disclose your name or your mother's name. But here is what she said. We are so proud of you. You have worked hard and accomplished much. Enjoy it here. It's not all about the grades. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Instead, swim in the experience. Oh, and wash your clothes. And don't leave dirty dishes in the bathroom sink. So there you have it, the gospel according to mom, and so true. Now in a few minutes, something extraordinary is going to happen. You will enter these doors behind me, you will walk through a passageway, and you will emerge into the Wren courtyard. Your passage is both literal and figurative. The symbolism is dramatic. One season of your life comes to a close, and another one opens up before you. As you do that, I invite you to take the puzzle piece that was on your chair. It, too, is a symbol. It's an icon. Madeline Engel, my favorite author, who wrote the classic children's book, A Wrinkle in Time, also wrote of the value of icons, small objects that are symbolic of greater truth. In the spiritual realm, icons may help focus our prayers or meditation. I hope you will keep this puzzle piece as an icon, a reminder of how you fit into this larger community called the tribe. Each puzzle piece is unique. Each piece is needed as part of the whole. All of the pieces together depict a beautiful tapestry, in this case known as the Williamsburg Quilt, which includes both the Wren Building and other colonial buildings throughout Williamsburg. Just like that puzzle piece, you are unique. You are needed. You belong here. You are an integral part of the whole that would not be the same without you. You are part of a community that is now enriched by your presence. Welcome to your college. Thank you.